Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is information problems. I cover this in Chapter 5 of The Rationality of War. You can check the video description for more information about that. Now remember, a few lectures ago, we introduced the idea of wars and efficiency puzzle, and that told us that there always exists settlements that are mutually preferable to war for two parties, and so the big curiosity about war is why two states will choose to fight costly conflicts when they could, in principle, agree to one of those settlements, and that settlement's going to be better for both of them than fighting. In the last video, we showed how shifting power can lead to war, and that's what we call the preventative war. And here, we're going to be addressing a new topic, which is uncertainty. So the big question here is how uncertainty causes war. Now, uncertainty can cause war in a variety of different ways. I'm just going to talk about one of them in this lecture. And if you want to learn more about the other ones, then I suggest you consult Chapter 5 of The Rationality of War. So to address this issue, let's just suppose A is very optimistic about its chances of war, or chances of victory in a war. So here we have labeled the probability of victory PA as being way down here on the line. So A is very likely to win. And of course, if they were to fight wars, then they had to pay costs. And so we have a CA and a CB, A's cost of war and B's cost of war. And so this creates the bargaining range right here. So we're all familiar with this idea of the bargaining range. And so A believes that any settlement between here and here is mutually preferable to war. So they should be able to come to an agreement between here and here and avoid the costs of conflict by just agreeing to a peaceful settlement within that bargaining range. But notice that I've labeled this A's overly optimistic beliefs. And so this is actually not the reality. B knows what's really going on. In reality, A is much less likely to win than what it believes. So notice that there's this very large discrepancy where the real PA is down here on the left end of the spectrum, and A believes it's much further to the right and therefore much more advantageous for A than it actually is. So in reality, the bargaining range is here where anything between this and this is mutually preferable to war. A, however, believes that the bargaining range is way down to the right, and these are the settlements that are mutually preferable to war. And note that those do not overlap. And so this is gonna cause a problem. Why is that? Well, when A sits down at the bargaining table, the most it's going to be willing to give to B is that amount right there. So this is the most that A is willing to concede to B because A believes that if it fights a war, it will get this amount over here, and so as a result, the most it's willing to give up to be in a bargain settlement is this amount right here, so the red line right here. Now, will that be sufficient to satisfy B? The answer is no, because B knows that in reality, it's going to get much more. It's going to get this red line right here, because if A fights a war, then A wins with probability PA, B receives the remainder, which is this amount right here, and after you deduct the cost, then B is receiving this amount right here. So B actually knows what's going on here and knows that it has to receive this amount in order to be satisfied, and A is not going to be willing to offer that amount. And because A is overly optimistic in this situation, A offers an insufficient amount to B, and B starts a war over this issue. Now what's interesting to note is that this process is still inefficient for both parties. B is really unfortunate and in an unfortunate situation here because it would like to be able to communicate to A that, hey, A, look, you're not nearly as powerful as you think you are. You need to offer me something in between here and here. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a war and a war is going to be bad for both of us because we'll both have to pay the costs. Whereas if we come to an agreement in here, then we're both better off because we're not paying those costs. Now, the reason that B can't tell this to A in a credible way is because B has incentives to misrepresent. You can think of this as a poker player buff bluffing. Imagine you're in A's shoes and B tells you, hey, yeah, the bargaining range is way down here. We need to negotiate somewhere in here, not over here. Well, if you're A and you receive this information, you're thinking to yourself, wow, that's really self-serving of B. B is probably actually weak. This is probably the reality. And B is just trying to bait me into offering more to him. And that's going to be worse for me because I'm going to be getting less because whatever I give to him is something that I can't keep for myself. And so really the reason that B is telling me this information is not because it's true, but because he's actually trying to get more for himself. So B's words here are essentially don't ring true for A. A retains its overly optimistic beliefs because it, B, it believes that B has all the incentives in the world to lie to it, and as a result, you can't negotiate yourself out of the situation. A is stuck believing its overly optimistic beliefs, and there's nothing that B can tell A to get A to believe that the bargaining range is actually over here. 
So that's the idea of uncertainty in a nutshell. And although there are many different ways that you can end up in war when you have uncertainty, the most obvious and intuitive one is when you have these uh, non-overlapping bargaining ranges. So I hope that was clear. You can check out, as I said, chapter five of The Rationality of War for more about this particular example, as well as many other examples with uncertainty. And in the meantime, we will take a brief break. And in the next video, we will talk about how issue indivisibilities can lead to war. Join me then.